Today, most people bypass Thetford as they speed past it on the A11 on the way to London, Norwich or Great Yarmouth. Before the bypass was built, drivers took the old A11 and saw only the factories and the fringes of the industrial estate. Either way, Thetford seems nothing much to write home about. But if you enter the heart of the town, you'll soon find that there is more to it than initially meets the eye. The ancient house museum tells the story of the town. It's the ancient house museum for Thetford life. This beautiful house and the members that volunteer and work in here, all their jobs to the many people who come to visit this town. And inside this beautiful house, holds the much more history of this town called Thetford, all the way from its beginnings in primordial era up to the current day. Now, I'm going to be stepping inside now and having a closer look. In Saxon times, prior to the Norman invasion of 1066, Thetford was the capital of East Anglia, a wealthy and desirable place to live. By 1086, Thetford was England's sixth biggest town. It soon became an important religious centre. The foundation stone of the priory was laid in the 12th century and 22 churches were dotted around the town. In the 1500s, King Henry VIII seized the wealthy monasteries to boost the royal coffers. The priory was left to fall to ruin, along with the rest of the town's religious houses. The priory ruins were used as cheap building material to build houses for rich merchants, who started to make money out of the wall trade. These beautiful ruins that I'm now sitting in were made in the early 12th century by uh, monks, who uh, were Christians of course, but during the times that it's been around, from about 12th century to about the early Tudor periods, the time of King Henry VIII, King Henry VIII decided to destroy these beautiful ruins by taking the money for his own greedy capitalist way, but leaving this beautiful primary to become what it is today. And during the time that it was left to ruin, the nearby villagers of this town decided to use material to make more richer and beautiful houses making it even more destroyed and desolate. As the Industrial Revolution gripped England, the northern towns became more important and Thetford largely owes its survival to Charles Burrell, who built a foundry here in the 1800s for the manufacture of steam traction engines. This building which I stand in front of now hosts the great Charles Bowe steam engines. These steam engines were designed in the 1800s and they were used all the way up in Yorkshire up to the 1920s and early 30s. They are composed of normal steam engines which pull carts and such on and they also rely on steam rollers which are also inside this museum. These steam engines are a wonderful, beautiful piece of pure British engineering and I have to say from being Russian it could also beat our engineering at the time. It attracted engineers from London, the Midlands and Yorkshire until it closed in 1928. The closure left the town with no major employer. The Borough Council approached London County Council to bring businesses to the town. As a result, 5,000 Londoners relocated to Thetford as financial incentives drew companies to the area. Today, around 22,000 people live in Thetford. Many of them are descendants of those who moved from London and those who relocated to work for Charles Burrell. Figures from the Department of Work and Pensions suggest that Thetford's story is one of success. The rate of unemployment is below the national average and pay is higher than the average for Norfolk. This is the Universal Job Centre or the Job Centre Plus building. Figures say from the working pensions that uh, Thetford is one of success. Many people seem to be getting much more jobs here 
than anywhere else in the country. And pay in Norfolk is much higher than anywhere else in the country. But some people would beg to differ that because some people find it very hard to find a job, even today. People say many bad things about this town, but one thing is for certain that you can look around here, they're all wrong. This town is vibrant with shops and people and even good deals. And I have to say for myself that this place is nice. The people are nice and as I spent my time in this town from the ruins to the historical value and the architecture and even the people I have to say this town called Fairfoot is definitely one to come visit. <laughs>